everybody, what's up? So I finally saw Bird Box, a Netflix original movie directed by Suzanne Beer, starring Sandra Bullock, Trevante Rhodes, and John Malkovich. The stream to more homes in its first week than tickets were sold for The Force Awakens. Apparently making this not just the most successful movie for Netflix, but the most successful movie ever. But the question is, was Bird Box a turd box? And for the most part, no. I enjoyed Bird Box. Was it good enough to outdo Star Wars? No. But it's a Netflix movie, and for that, it seemed well made. I would have been disappointed if I shelled out 10 to 15 bucks for a ticket, though, but I didn't have to. Plus, I gotta watch it from the comfort of my own couch, and there's something about that that just feels good sometimes. Anyways, before I start my review, I want to let everybody know that I separate all my reviews into four chosen categories. At the end of my review, I'll tally up these scores for the final score. Today for Bird Box, I've chosen the story, the scares, because it's a horror movie, right? I don't know, maybe more of a thriller. That's actually one problem I had and something I'm going to get into more detail in later in this review. I've also selected the acting and the directing. So let's get to it. First, as always, I'll be starting with the story. In the case of Bird Box, the movie's story isn't anything unfamiliar to us. It simply feels like a remake of The Happening, with a splash of The Quiet Place and a teensy-weensy splash of The Crazies. It starts five years in the past, with Bullock's Mallory facing pregnancy and fears of becoming a single mother, when a sinister unseen presence spreads across the globe, causing people to uncontrollably commit suicide. When Mallory is rescued and taken into a home with a group of survivors, she must now learn to live with the others as they try to find safety in a post-apocalyptic world where if you look, you die. I thought the story in Bird Box, although not completely original, was satisfactory. It was a step up from the happening, and the dialogue was pretty solid. It does consist of a lot of flashbacks and a lot of flash forwards, though, that consist of a five-year time gap, which ends up just a gap. But still, I enjoyed seeing Mallory's growth from the reluctant mother of one to the loving mother of two, and the overall story kept me watching beginning to end. Still, it contains too many unanswered plot holes that will leave you guessing long after this movie's over. Like, why do their eyes change when they see it? What exactly is a safe barrier between your vision and these creatures? Why does a thin fabric blindfold work but security cameras don't? Are they really even creatures, or is this a bio-attack by North Korea like the news implied? Why are crazy people immune to seeing? Where did Lucy and Machine Gun Kelly go after they left? How do the birds always know when it's coming? And conveniences, too, like Mallory and Olympia's having babies at the same moment. How does Sandra Bullock's doctor also manage to make it to the survivor's location? As well as, why is there a home for the blind in the middle of a forest with a bird sanctuary? I'll give the story a C-. So many questions, so little answers. Next thing I want to listen to talk about are the scares, which leads me to the biggest question of all. Why didn't we see anything? Charlie says it shows you your worst nightmares, your greatest fears, or your worst tragedies. And even though it does have some disturbing images of suicide with one character being vaporized by a bus and another burning alive in a car, the scares are limited to shadows, whispering voices, and the wind. I was under the impression this was supposed to be a horror film. That is how it was advertised, right? But it ends up a post-apocalyptic thriller. I want to see the people's greatest fears. It could have been so simple and so much more effective if this was just added. I mean, I'm afraid of possessed ventriloquist dolls. I hate the idea, as well as many people hate clowns or spiders. They didn't have to come up with anything big. Practical effects would have been fine. But Bird Box leaves us just as blind as the characters in it. And I'm sure that's the reason they will give us as for the decision to not show us these creatures or what they were causing their victims to see. I'll give the scares in Bird Box a D-. So if you're looking for something scary, Bird Box is kind of lacking. But if you haven't seen The Haunting of Hill House yet, and you want to be scared, I recommend checking it out. The 10 episodes are definitely worth binging. Now onto the directing. Due to I feel this kind of ties into what I just talked about, and it's where the film excels the most. Directed by the first female director to win a Golden Globe, Academy Award, and Emmy Award, Susan Beer, who, like I said, was restricted to not showing us what was causing all this hysteria. Sure, in my opinion, that killed the scares, but Beer here was able to use this and create what I consider to be a pretty tense thriller. The use of shadows and sounds to establish the creatures instead of sight by using the wind and voices stolen from loved ones, whispering into the heads trying to convince them to remove their blindfolds, along with the creative shots like the one on the river with the man in the shadows coming out of the fog, feel, and look eerily realistic. I'll give the directing a B+. Beer here was able to turn around one of the film's weakest points and turn it into a strong point. 
Even though I wasn't scared, I was genuinely frightened for the characters involved. And lastly, there's the acting in Bird Box, which I'm split on. Sandra Bullock did a great job and was really convincing. Trevante Rhodes and John Malkovich also give above average and acceptable performances. The children were fine as well, but the amount of time they had on screen just really isn't enough to judge their performances by. Plus, they're five, so who really cares? Their job's to look innocent and cute, and they do just that. But the rest of the performances, Machine Gun Kelly, Rosa Salazar, Jackie Weaver, are all sub-satisfactory and half-assed. And then there's the case of Danielle McDonald, who plays Olympia, who gives all of her dialogue in this whiny, under-her-breath voice, which was like running your nails down a chalkboard. It was so annoying. I just wanted to throw her out of a window. Thank you. The only part of this movie that made me stand up and cheer. I'll give the acting a C+. Luckily, most of this movie revolves around Bullock and Rhodes. And finally, for my final score. Even though Bird Box leaves us with a lot of open-ended questions, it feels more like a cliffhanger than an ending, and falls short on out-of-your-seat scares, Beer achieves good performances by Bullock and Rhodes that will leave you terrified for those involved. In the end, after tallying up all my scores, I'll give Bird Box a C. Thanks everybody for coming checking out my review of Bird Box. If you like this review and you want to see more like it, click that subscribe button right here and join the quest.